So here's what happened with the music that I was planning on using the day before yesterday while we were watching the, uh, uh, well, I went around the Bismarck there. We had about five minutes to kill, and I thought, you know what? It'd be kind of nice to have some German marching music. It'd be sort of appropriate. So in the search box in YouTube, I type German marching music, and this comes up, 10 songs. And I'm thinking, okay. So I thought I'd better just check and see if there's any copywriting going on. It appeared that one of them was copyrighted. So I didn't use that one. But out of the other nine, I sort of made up a collage of music, and it was sort of like as one marching band goes by, the other one sort of fades in, and it was actually quite good. I was rather pleased with myself. So I thought, I better just test this out. So I uploaded my music to onto YouTube, onto another channel I have, and I, and I went to check it out to see if it, if it was going to be okay. And they said, we're not going to show it to you because it, uh, uh, it goes against our policy of hate speech. And I'm thinking, hate speech? I got this off YouTube. Anyway, you have the option to contest it if you want, but I didn't want to go to all that hassle. But I thought it was really interesting. Their computer deemed that music as hate speech. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was the lilt of it or whatever. You can listen to it yourself. Maybe if you speak German, you might say, get back to me and say, hey, that was hate speech. Uh, but then why is it still there? Anyway, I don't care. We got good music. Let's get on with our case. Now, before I actually order the fiberglass and get them to bend it to the right shape, I want to find out what is the smallest that it can safely be and still accommodate the three ships that I plan to put in here. Now, according to Trumpeter, the Bismarck is 1265 millimeters long. Now, I don't know if they're including the, uh, the Ensign Flagstaff or if it just means from the, from the, the, uh, the uh, actual hull to the actual uh, bow on the hull. Uh, the uh, jack stand doesn't lean forward, so I don't think that's going to affect anything. Um, now, some time ago, we did actually run a tape around the gunnel. I don't know if it was this tape, but uh, to, ta to measure it accurately, you just can't run the tape over the top unless we were to remove the superstructure. Now, <laughs> it could be that in years to come, this will all have come off anyway. Now, I'm hoping that's not, not the case, because for the case, I want to try and do a nice job on it. It's my hope that, that uh, eventually my son will probably have this, and and I'm, I'm kind of hoping that uh, my grandson will be able to say, uh, my, my grandfather made this. And, uh, and I'm, then you say, yeah, Grandpa's 103 and he's still jogging. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. But anyway, uh, this, is, this is what I'm thinking of doing here. If I take this speed square and just put it up against the back there, then make a little mark. Where's my pencil? I'm not prepared. Okay, we'll make a little mark right here. Eventually. We'll eventually get it. i got to hold the square down. Don't bend the railing now. There we go. Okay, now I'll do the same thing at the bow. And then I'll just measure between the two, uh, the two marks, and we should have it. And we'll see how close to 1265 that is. Okay, now, there are very few places I can grab this thing. I don't want to be scraping it around, although the bottom will not be, be seen anyway. All right, now we just uh, now. Unfortunately, this tape will not will not lock in place very good. It keeps wanting to creep on me. All right, let's put this right on the mark there. All right. Hold it down. Now 
Okay. Okay, so this would be... Okay, so that would be the 12. 1200 millimeters is right there. And 65 is about right here. Uh, it's more like 55, so I guess the 65 includes right out to the end of this. Okay, well that kind of makes sense. Um, so that would mean that, uh, I'll have to check the uh, pictures of the hood. The hood is, is longer than the, uh, well let's go back to the computer and check everything out here. Um, now, maybe now is a good time to, to talk about this about yesterday's video. Just in case there was somebody younger and they didn't know what I was trying to get at. And when I was going like this, I was trying to tell that my friend, the parents of my friend Alex had tattoos uh, or had serial numbers tattooed on their arms. They were survivors of the Nazi death camp. And at that time, the swastika was very uh, vehemently being flown uh, around those camps. Uh, yeah, so that's what that was all about and it just triggered a whole lot of, of emotion because of the, the the tragedy of the whole thing. If you do not know about this, if you're a younger person you don't know about this, I strongly recommend you Google, Google it and investigate it. Uh, and uh, And who knows, maybe your knowledge of the fact that it really did happen will help to, uh, that it won't happen again. I mean, that's the whole idea. That's what I was getting at. If we don't remember our mistakes, we're bound to repeat them. So, uh, yeah. And now we're not, I'm not going to talk about this anymore now. When we go on Trumpeter's website, we find that they have about a dozen ships that they've made in the 1 to 200 scale. And uh, the latest being the Titanic. I got a feeling that they're probably selling that as fast as they can stamp it out. Uh, but the rest are, are uh, looks like military ships, like the Bismarck. Now, the Bismarck, if we check the, the specs, it's uh, 1,265 millimeters as mentioned. Now, the hood is 1,318. Uh, it's a little bigger than the Bismarck. Now, the Rodney is quite a bit smaller. But we don't need to worry about the Rodney for a long way down the road. At least I hope. Unless for some reason the hood just does not show up and Cellar Dweller says it's not available anymore. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen. I really do think we are going to get the hood. Maybe not as soon as we'd like, but hopefully soon after the case is done. While I was here at the computer, I thought I may as well check on the status for our, our power supply for our LED light. And it's here in Winnipeg. And it's out for delivery. We might get it before the end of this episode, and heavy on the word might. Now you will remember, careful now Ron, don't wreck anything, that when I was talking about what I was going to use for the top and the bottom, I was thinking of using uh, pre-finished shelving, and, and I have a, a piece of it in my computer room where I was just now, and I thought, you know, uh, why don't I just measure it and see how, how uh, wide it is. It's, I believe it's 8 feet long and it, it measures out to just a little over 11 inches wide. And then uh, I thought, you know, let's just now check and see. I think I'll use this one here. It's not as clear. But I want to just check on the width now. So... 11 inches would come to here, let's say half an inch for the back, and let's say half an inch for the, yeah, that would just barely do it actually, because the airplane's going to be hanging right here. Uh, Tony's airplane would probably be right up pretty much against the edge of the plexiglass, and then the ship would be almost right at the back, but then there's going to have to be for the brackets. Uh, I should check and see if maybe there isn't shelving that is slightly wider than that. That that would do it, except that, you, you know, uh, what if it's a little bit too narrow? And I, I do want to have the airplane hanging down here, just as though it was just raised up out of the water. 
normally the the water line on this on this uh, ship would probably be about here and uh the plane if it was just lifted up would be well much much where the way it was um anyway rambling again yeah oh one thing that i that i did notice that i thought i would mention when i set this down flat on the table like like it is i i was noticing that the propellers are up off of the uh up off of the table they they don't they don't hit the table uh and i had always thought until i started building this model that the rudder and the propellers would have been the lowest thing on the ship in other words if you went over a, a reef the bottom might clear but the, the rudder the, the rudder would catch but as you can see here uh it's it's not that way uh well, I wasn't planning on going over a reef, so it doesn't matter. I just had a little accident here just now. I was moving our template over and I guess I somehow caught it on the hook. And, uh, well, you can see what happened. I hope I don't have to completely restring this. Maybe if I put a little bit of CA on the side of that on the side of that pulley at the top there. Just touch this on it, it might work. Um, I'm not discouraged, I'm not depressed, but I'm thinking maybe it's time to take a break here. Thanks for watching. All being well, we'll see you tomorrow.